We in, in America, if we were truthful, would say the mass incarceration of African Americans, in my judgment, is the civil rights issue of our time. For the men we serve, the road to prison starts at birth. They're faced with an impossible choice, suffer in dire poverty, or take the only path that's open, the underground economy. My name is Michael Trent. I'm 44 years old. I've spent almost half my life inside of a prison cell. Drug dealing is an easy thing to get into. You live in the inner city neighborhoods, it's not a problem. I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been kidnapped, I've been arrested more times than I can count, and all behind living a life on the streets. 2.2 million Americans are sitting behind bars, able-bodied men with children who need them, communities who need them. When I was 12 years old, my mother committed suicide, growing up in the streets alone, um, feeling disconnected from family was terrifying. So I had a lot of friends who were already in the streets. They were basically my role models. My life was very rough growing up inside of a crack house. And my mother, she was a drug dealer at the time. The house was flooded with crackheads. I just tried to hide from it all, you know, try to stay away from it until I started drinking and smoking. Then it was like brainwashed to the to the streets. We spend billions of dollars incarcerating people, but we spend no money at all bringing them home. And you know, our experience indicates that a lack of programs like Ready, Willing, and Able and a lack of opportunity indeed cause people to go back to prison. Coming home from prison is, you know, a lot of mixed emotions. And you're nervous, you're scared, you know, everything's moving fast. The world has changed. You're actually coming home to nothing. Trying to find a job when you're getting out of prison is very difficult for a lot of people. Just the mere fact that you have been incarcerated is like, you know, a turnoff for a lot of potential employers. They still have to put food on the table if they have children. You already know they feel desperate, so they go back to doing what they know best. We think these men are off on their own. That's a big mistake. All of them have families. They're all needed, and they're all missed. The relationship with my daughter in prison was uh, not so good. She was, she was actually angry at me for like abandoning her, so uh, that wasn't a good situation for me. I felt like a failure. I can't explain it. It just put me back into a mindset and a place of, I'm putting my children through the same thing that my parents put me through. It's extremely difficult. Everybody wants to be a father to their children. They want to have dignity. They want to recognize their own self-worth. They want to go to work. They want to be in the mainstream. Ready, Willing, and Able uplifts the men that we serve, but it also, and just as importantly, uplifts their children, the mothers of their children, and their communities. Ready, Willing, and Able reduces recidivism by 60%. The Dope Fund gave me an opportunity to better myself. Whatever it was in me, they bought out of me. They opened up a door and let me walk through the door instead of evolving in the door. It helped me buckle down and be a better parent, a better father. The lack of economic opportunity is at the root of all of the problems that we face. We provide an opportunity for people to help themselves go to work, and then go on and climb the economic ladder themselves. They give opportunities when no one else does. They saw me for what I was worth, and then taught me how to see myself for what I was worth. Now at the Dope Fund, I'm able to continue following my dreams, like obtaining my GED and going to culinary school, and becoming a chef that I want to become. Uh, the opportunity that the Dope Fund has given me is to go back to uh, college and get a bachelor's. Since joining the Dope Fund, my relationship with my kids has dramatically changed. I'm a different parent, a different person. My relationship with my kids is uh, it's pretty great. I went from pop to dad to I'm just daddy now. <laughs> it's really good. We can get them home. 
We can stop their children from being condemned. We can save our country billions of dollars and lift up millions of lives. And we know we can do it because we have been doing it for 30 years, for 22,000 men. It is possible. This is my son. This is what the Dolphin has given me back.